All right, everybody, welcome back to another Bee Mother Review. And today we've got the first in the G.I. Joe line from Prime One Studio. This is Storm Shadow. Now, who is Storm Shadow, if you don't know? He is the very first Cobra Ninja. He is actually, I looked this up, he's actually a Japanese-American. His real name is Tommy Arashikage. And um, I'm sure I butchered that, but that his last name translates actually literally to Storm Shadow. And the Arashikage clan is this legendary Japanese ninja clan. Um, goes back like 30 generations. Like his whole family, all they know is to be a ninja assassin. Um, so this guy was destined to be awesome from the day he was born. And um, so Storm Shadow, he is he's a legendary character in the G.I. Joe franchise. Um, he is not G.I. Joe ninja guy, as my buddy Marco referred to him. This is actually not my statue, it's my friend Russ's, so thanks Russ for lending him for the review. But Russ and Marco are good buddies. They go over to Marco's house, kind of QC it, and then let me know when the statue's ready to pick up for the review. So Marco texts me, and he says, uh, I got uh, G.I. Joe Ninja Guy for you. I just about fell out of my chair. I mean, you do not disrespect a ninja by calling him Ninja Guy. Okay, he will cut your balls right off. You call him Storm Shadow and get it right. Okay, Storm Shadow. Now, when you look at a statue like this, you're kind of reminded, okay, there are very few universal truths in life, right? Uh, water is wet. The sky is blue. Ninjas are awesome. I mean, who hasn't wanted to be a ninja at some point in their life? Think about it. I mean, who doesn't still want to be a ninja now? I look at this, and I'm thinking... Damn, I wish I was a ninja. I wish I could do nunchucks or like, you know, have, have katanas on my wall or something like that. I mean, that, how awesome would that be? Um, I think it'd be great. Now, G.I. Joe, um, really, it, it played a pretty big role in my life. I've had, I've had several obsessions uh, throughout my life and started with Masters of the Universe. And then right after that, it was G.I. Joe. And I, I went into it pretty hard uh, as a kid. Um, but I was in. I got into it after the sort of the first wave of figures and Storm Shadow. The original Storm Shadow was long gone. Uh, you couldn't get it. You couldn't just hop on eBay those days and pick up a mint in box Storm Shadow. Um, but I got lucky. My babysitter's son who was a little bit older. Had him. He had grown out of his GI Joes. They weren't cool anymore for him. And I picked up the Storm Shadow. It didn't have any weapons or anything, but I didn't care because I had. The Ninja Storm Shadow, and then I played with it. Let's like almost every day. I loved it, um, but then it went missing one day, and I'm positive that my friend stole it from me. So if you're watching, Evan, I know you took it, and I still haven't forgiven you for it. Okay, I want my Storm Shadow back, but as I said, GI Joe is pretty uh, special to me as a kid. Uh, so let's get in the review and see if this statue is worthy of bringing back your childhood memories. All right, so we'll get into the sculpt and design on this statue. And, um, you know, if you're a big fan of the original figures, so that's how you got into G.I. Joe, you're going to notice some differences between this and that original figure. Um, first of all, a lot of the complaints that I was reading sort of before this came out was people didn't like how you could see all his muscles uh, on his chest because typically you know he's wearing this um, more traditional gi outfit like a sleeveless gi and it, that's a baggy kind of loose fitting shirt that uh, you wouldn't be able to see his muscles through. Um, another thing is the swords. You'll notice he's got two sort of straight blade swords and they're the same length. The original figure of course had a katana and a wakizashi which is a little bit shorter katana. He had two different length swords like a like a samurai does. Um, but that said, this statue, I believe, is based on the IDW Comics version of Storm Shadow. And in fact, the pose and everything is almost uh, directly from a uh, cover of the IDW series. And so it's kind of an updated version where you can see all his muscles. So they've, they have translated that version of Storm Shadow almost exactly here. Um, he does have all kind of the original weapons of the original figure. 
Uh, he's got the, the bow, the uh, arrow quiver on his back. He does have the bow, which I'll show you. Uh, it's a switch out option a bit later. You know, the two swords and the nunchucks as well. Uh, he does have a switch out head. Um, so this head here, uh, I find that this one looks a lot more like that original um, you know, figure that came out in the 80s. Um, I, I kind of like this one a bit better, but this one, if you want that more traditional look, you got the exclusive head here that you can switch out with. Um, as I mentioned, the pose is basically right off uh, a comic book cover, but that cover didn't have any environment around it. So they've kind of adapted this base to suit the pose. And I like what they've done with the base, actually. It looks really nice. The, the logs here, the two fallen logs, have really nice wooden texture that looks uh, very realistic. The rocks around the base have a nice texture to them as well. Nice detail there. And then you got this fence post, uh, or whatever it is, it looks like a fence post. Uh, it's kind of toppling over, a bit of a Japanese flair to it, so it kind of sets the scene. Uh, everything kind of looks slippery and difficult to, to stand on, but you know he's doing it like a ninja would, like a boss, right? Uh, he looks balanced, he's got his swords ready, um, so he looks like he could strike from this pose easily. So I like the design. I like the sculpt. One thing I didn't notice in the preview, uh, the preview pictures was the hood on the back. Uh, he does have the, the Storm Shadow hood kind of flipped back over, over his shoulders there. So nice detail on the belt. He's got pouches on his belt. Nice texture on the pants. Nice texture on the, um, the mask. Uh, nice lacing up the boots. He's got the, the ties around his shins there and the kind of the baggy folds in his pants. All the folds are sculpted in his pants as well. It's a nice detail on the boot. Nice quilted pattern on the arrow quiver. Some panel lines on the sword sheaths and everything. So really nice detail on the statue. Uh, I really like the sculpt and I really like how they adapted the base to suit the pose and it looks kind of natural. Um, and again, it's based off the IDW. I believe it's based off the IDW comics. It's almost exact from that cover. So, um, nice job. I like it. All right, so you'll notice I've switched up the portrait here to the more classic style. Um, again, that's the exclusive portrait. Um, and we will switch up to the bow and arrow pose, which is really cool in the next segment. But for now, we're just gonna run through paint on the statue really quick. And again, the base, I think, turned out really, really well here. Uh, I really like the moss that they've got growing on some of the rocks and the logs. Nice job there. And some they've got some glossy, like, streams of water um, rolling down these rocks, which looks really cool. It adds a, a sense of realism to the scene. So really nice job on the base. I like what they've done with the costume as well. Um, you know, white costume can be a little tough. If it's too bright, it's kind of kind of in your face a little bit. But they've knocked it down nicely with some gray shading. Uh, you can notice that a little bit in the inside of his thigh there. Uh, so nice job on that. Uh, really, you know, for the most part, pretty clean lines throughout. You'll notice the Cobra logo on the chest. They did a really good job. You know, the strap around his chest. Uh, a little gets a little bit messy here on the lacing uh, up at the, his gloves, but not too, too bad. It's a really tight area, so you, it's, you'd almost expect to see that there. Uh, and it doesn't really take away from the statue at all, so not too bad. The skin on the face and the arms is kind of that translucent resin that uh, Prime One likes to use. And I've seen it on use on portraits before, like the Spider-Man 2099 and the Arkham Deathstroke, for example. Uh, this is the first time I've seen it used kind of beyond the face and, and with the two arms. And, you know, at times it can look really, really good. It picks up the detail, the sculpted texture of the skin really well. And in certain lighting, it looks very realistic. In other lighting, it can look a little plasticky. So, um, you know, you're going to want to play around with where you display this guy, I think. Um, but overall, I think the paint turned out really good on this guy. Build quality on this statue. We will quickly run through how the statue goes together. And I'm not taking the whole thing apart for you, but um, uh, we'll show you most of the pieces here. 
the base is mostly one big piece. Uh, the red post is a separate piece that drops in uh, to a slot on the base. Then you drop the body on, and you've got the backpack here. It's actually two pieces. Get the sword sheaths and then the arrow quiver, and they just stick together with a magnet. Each arrow is um, a separate piece. And you can see it's just a tiny bit of an arrow there. Uh, and there's little holes in the top of the quiver, and you just drop them in. Uh, they don't go in very far, so don't try to push them in too far. You don't want to break anything. Um, but the whole thing just fits onto his backpack or a slot in his back. And it was a little tricky to get on here, but it slides on and secures in with a magnet, as you can see there. Uh, then you got his nunchucks. Uh, the chain on the nunchucks is metal too, by the way. Uh, but again, just another magnet. Fits onto his belt right there. The heads are a magnet as well. They drop in like that. And then um, the swords I wanted to show you as well. Uh, the sword blades come out from the handles there. And the blades themselves are actually metal too, which is kind of cool. Uh, so those just slot in like that, um, like so. And we'll put that back down because we're going to go with the bow and arrow pose here. Um, so we've got the back arm and it's all magnets again. Uh, we'll, so we'll put the back arm in and then we'll put his left arm in. Again, another magnet. And then you've got the bow itself. And you can see the hand is attached to the bow there. This little bit on the end is a separate piece, so you can slot that on. And then you just put the bow or the hand into the end of the arm there. And the, the string on the bow is actually an elastic. So then you just kind of stretch that back around his two fingers there. And then you've got the arrow itself, um, which is, uh, it's actually a metal uh, arrow, uh, so that's kind of neat. And you just sort of slot that on. Now this just kind of sits into place, and the little tip of the arrow, or the back end of the arrow, just kind of fits uh, into in between his fingers a little bit. Um, so it's kind of a loose fit. So you're not going to want to pick it up like this and move it, I don't think. You want to... Uh, I'll probably take the arrow out if you're going to move it. Um, but there you go. There's the arrow pose. And I really like that. I think it looks really cool. Uh, if you look at the right angle, he is looking down the sight of the bow, which is pretty cool. The one oversight here that kind of bugs me a little bit, uh, and it's mostly kind of an OCD thing, is if you remember on the Deathstroke statue, they had a little uh, sword handle that you could put in the back of the sheath when he wasn't holding the sword itself. I really wish you could do that for this statue here and put a couple handles sticking out of those sheaths for those swords. I think that would have been such a nice touch because you know, if you put him like this, you know, where are his swords? I don't think a ninja is just gonna leave his swords laying around, right? He's gonna, he's gonna want them back. Uh, so I, I, that's one little small oversight. Other than that, the statue, it's a nice quality piece. It's got a good weight to it. Uh, you know, Prime 1 always adds these big risers to the bottom, so that's going to add a little bit of weight to the statue as well. One thing about this one is you'll see the, uh, the Arashikage um, Ninja Clan logo on the front. So my mind wants to say, you know, that should be front and center, right? So if you put that in the front, you kind of get the, a view of his back. So it's in a bit of an odd spot for me. Uh, I kind of wish it was more over here so you could see the logo, and then see Storm Shadow front and center too. Uh, the packaging, you can see the box here was oh, nicely done. Everything's kind of packed with the, um, it's like a, almost like a velvety material. Um, so it helps, I think that really helps with the paint job. Uh, inside the box you do get the assembly guide which is helpful. Uh, and they also on this one included uh, the placement of pieces in the box. Uh, I really love that statue companies are, are starting to catch on to that and do that for people because it can be pretty difficult to remember where things go when you go to pack these things up at times. So, uh, really nice quality piece. Um, 
I, I've got really no complaints about the quality. It, it, it's really a quite a nice piece. All right, we're going to wrap up the review. Prime One Studio Storm Shadow, of course, the lead release in their new G.I. Joe line. Um, I think it's a really great way to start off. The statue turned out very, very well. Of course, they've got Snake Eyes coming up soon. You can't have Storm Shadow without Snake Eyes. A bit of a surprise release to me was Serpentor, which I loved that figure as a kid. I think he is awesome. I'm a little surprised that they released him uh, on the heels of those two, though. I'm not upset about it. He looks great. Um, I've been able to resist the lineup until now, but if they do a Cobra Commander in the future, I might have to buy into it. Um, he, those were my favorite figures growing up. And speaking of Cobra, I mean, is the Cobra logo not one of the greatest logo designs of all time? It just looks so awesome. I think it's really stood the test of time. Um, but anyway, Storm Shadow, I think he turned out really, really well. Uh, I'll give you a quick another 360 of the bow and arrow pose. It looks awesome. Um, so if you weren't sure if you wanted this guy, hopefully now you know. And of course, knowing is half the battle. Uh, was that lame? I, that might have been kind of lame way to end this off. But um, anyways, more reviews coming soon and we'll talk to you guys later.